What's up everyone? This is Darcy from Darcizzle Offshore. And in today's video, I show you step by step how to take an actual giant alligator skull or alligator head that we caught out in the swamp. And I show you step by step of exactly how to make a beautiful European skull mount. All right guys, I just wanna go over the basic stuff that you're gonna need in order to do this with the skull. And not only this, does this apply to alligator skulls, but it will apply to pigs or hogs, deer, squirrels, not so much fish, but any other skull or mammal you can do this with. All right, so what you're gonna need, you're, all, you're gonna need your power washer. I got just a simple power washer there. I believe it goes up to 1600 PSI. We also got our uh, burner here. And on top, this is the biggest pot that I could find, aluminum pot, or you can use a tin pot, whatever you have in your house works fine, or just go to the store and get, your, or get yourself one. Don't forget about your propane take for the heat. And we got our skull here, of course. And most importantly, you're gonna also need a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, I've got that there. Dawn dish soap is gonna work as a degreaser. And if you don't have Dawn dish soap, you can also use OxyClean. And that's gonna go in with the pot of water. So first thing we need to do here, oh, oh, don't also, I've got a little bit of uh, tweezers or forceps here, and you're definitely gonna need this for an alligator skull because there's so many orifices and holes that you're gonna need to get the meat out of. So make sure you got those tools if you're doing an alligator skull. Now what we need to do is we're gonna fill this pot to the very top with water, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add Dawn dish soap for the first round, just a little bit of it, and like I said, that's gonna act as our degreaser. So let's get this started. This is so heavy, y'all. This is the skull of a giant 10 foot, seven inch gator. We'll open up his mouth here so you can check that out. There you go. Actually, hold on. But we did an epic alligator hunt up in Central Florida and we harvested two giant 10 foot plus alligators. So that is a skull of one of them. Check out that hunt if you haven't seen it. Pretty epic, cats clean cook, Florida gator. But let's get this giant's head in there and please don't yell at me because we're preserving the animals that we hunt and we want to preserve his skull and make a really cool European mount. All right, so I'm just going to stick them in there. It's going to start boiling here. Again, that's the biggest pot I could find, so <laughs> it'll work though. I'll make it work. Now, the last thing we got to do for this first round, we're going to add some Dawn dish soap to it. And once again, that's going to act as a degreaser and it's going to really help us get that oils and the meat out of the skull because this particular animal is just full of meat on the inside of the skull. Pretty crazy. All right, so we added that and we're gonna let it boil. It's probably gonna be about an hour, so I'll see you then. All right. Put them down right here. And you can see that skin separating right there means that that's ready to get power washed, but I need to flip around and cook this part of it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And then we'll let them cook a little longer, pull them out, and then it'll be time for the power washing big old gator just like fish as soon as you start to see that skull and the, the, the skin separate just like kind of like a fish does when it's ready and it's done cooking same exact thing with this it's ready to be power washed we just got to get the other side all right sweet all right alligators coming out you can see the top of the nose that's a key sign that he is ready to get power washed you can actually see part of the skull right here check that out all right, now it's time to get dirty. We're gonna let them cool down, separate the jaws, and it's time to get dirty. Like I said, let's do this. That fell right apart. Perfect. Have to separate the jaws on an alligator. And you see all this meat is just peeling right off and that actual Dawn dish soap made it like really kind of like gelatin, which is pretty crazy. It looks like jelly now, that meat. All right. So I'm aware of the, the, the lower jaw to be much more fragile than the top of this head. So I'm gonna work on the lower jaw first and then we're gonna get this back in the water. And this time, instead of using, instead of using Dawn dish soap, we're gonna add 60% by volume water and 40% hydrogen peroxide mix into that big pot. And then, we, then it'll be the last step of the boiling process. So here we go, let's do this. Oh, another, another tip, wear your foul weather gear or grungeons or something like this because you're gonna get dirty. <laughs> Forgot the power thing, hold on. One jerk.
It is coming right off though. I just need a higher spray on it. All right, so I decided to work on the bottom jaw first because that is more difficult. And I just realized too that this whole entire bottom jaw is hollow and it's full of meat. I got the meat out on one side, but you can see there's like orifices here that you just go take your um, tweezers or your forceps or whatever you want to use and just like try to get this meat out. But it is stuck in there, pieces of cartilage. Let's see if I can get this big chunk out. And I also pulled out a couple teeth by accident and uh, knocked out a couple teeth and he, the keeks, see, look at all that chunk of meat that just came out. Looks good too. I'm not going to eat it though. <laughs> but um, you're going to blow at, with the power wash on the side of the teeth. Don't blow directly on them. And I uh, made that mistake and blew, popped out a couple teeth. But I, I'm going to just try to keep it at an angle at all times and not try to get out any more teeth. But if you do take them out, you just glue them back in. No big deal. Really close to getting this gator completed. Like I said, the, we put the other jaw, the lower jaw in the water already, but this thing, it's crazy. It's full of holes. I'm all icky. I recommend that you wear gloves. Usually a lot of people wear gloves, but I'm just sticking my hand in there and pulling out meat. I don't care. <laughs> but every hole like, is full of meat. It's pretty wild. And even all up here in the nose, I still have meat to get out. You can still see the meat kind of stuck in there. So it's really crazy just to see like how much meat I've pulled out of this alligator's head crazy and then right here on both sides there's a big chunk of meat that looked really good actually the texture looked good it smelled good uh, but again I'm probably not gonna eat it but you can see I just have this little piece right here to do and I think I did pretty good for my first uh, European mount even though it's not done we'll finish the process here real soon but just got to finish off spraying him off and you can see right here how much gunk came out of that gator's head look at all of that stuff and that's the chunk of meat that I was talking about that looks quite delicious actually. White for meat. Am I gonna eat it? No, I'm not gonna eat it, but I just wanted to show you that you could eat it if you wanted to. So there you go. You can eat the gator's meat inside his head. And right here, there was big white chunks of meat. But up in here in the nose, I guess this animal just smells a ton. I mean, it's a predator, so just crazy how much nose gunk was in there. Pretty cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this little piece right here that I have not completed. I'm all wet and stinky, wanna go in the house, and then we'll finish the process tomorrow, and I'll show you exactly the last two steps with how to do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it too. It's the next day, guys. It got super late. I was working on this alligator skull for quite a while in the middle of the night. Well, it was close to midnight, but I got done. And you can see, look how awesome they look. Look at all the detail on the top of the skull just looks beautiful and I was really really concerned about this bottom jaw because everybody says that the, the jaw actually splits right up here at the top and for some reason it did not split so I want to take good care of it and I didn't want to overboil it but again I think the key to success in making sure this bottom the jaw bottom jaw does not split apart is to just don't overboil it that's the key to success here so I did a good job for my first time ever I think and now you can see, obviously, there's little pieces of meat still on here, and they do stink a little bit. And like I said, every orifice and every hole in this skull was just full of meat. All these little tiny holes everywhere. And there's actually still meat in there. So the next step we need to do here, and the last step, is he's going back in the pot. And I'm going to show you the two ingredients that you need in order to start the whitening process and the last of the degreasing process to get the last little bits of meat off. Let's go over there. This skull is just the coolest thing ever, just looking at all the details. And I, I forgot to say that I blew out four teeth when I was uh, doing the power washing, which is no big deal. I'll fit that stuff back in. But you just see all these little holes up in here. Like they have so much, they can sense and feel things beneath the water. And like that's all those like little pores right there that give them those abilities. And they can just be just under the surface level. And that's how they attack predators and stuff. So it's just really cool to see that up close in person and preserving this head. All right, so I closed the mouth, interlocked the two jaws together, and he's going right back in the pot. I really wish that he was submerged, but this is the best I can do with the pot. You should have him completely submerged when you're going to do the whitening process. Now, by volume, you're gonna use 40% liquid peroxide or also peroxide developer. Both of them are basically exactly the same. And we are gonna, again, 40% by volume. So we're gonna do 40% hydrogen peroxide in here, 60% water. And then that solution, we're going to heat up with the burner here. And the key 
to this part right here is once you get it filled up, let me start adding my peroxide. Once you get it filled up and you get that burner turned on, just make sure as soon as it comes to a boil, you're paying attention to it and you immediately turn it off. That's very, very important. Turn it off right away and let it soak in that warm peroxide solution. And this is going to act, like I said, as a whitener, but also as a degreaser. And it's gonna help get those little last pieces of meat right off. It'll make it a little gelatin thing. And then we'll blow it with the power washer one more time and then he'll be all set. So let's get this filled up and cooking. Couple things that I forgot to mention, y'all. One, make sure this pot is very, very clean when you go to put them back in for the whitening process. Clean it real good. Uh, and then second, I also wanted to mention that I, since my, my gator doesn't fit all the way in there, I really prefer for him to be submerged completely. But since he's not, when the water comes to a boil, I'll go ahead and flip him around in that warm solution so that way it gets both sides. Got, got to do with what I have. I don't know if you guys can see this, but after coming out of the peroxide wash, there's a bunch of like gelatin, like all right around the gator's teeth here. And all the areas that were open, like this whole entire jaw is hollow, all of this uh, gelatin-like consistency of stuff came out. And that's what the hydrogen peroxide did to it. It made it like this jelly form. And that's the last piece of like the guts and the goop and all the stuff that's inside the skull comes out. And so it's actually just, all over the teeth and then I can see lots of goop on the inside and it's, it's kind of difficult to see but I'm gonna knock it out with the pressure washer and I think a good tip for you guys to know is always like when I first started with the actual skull and I had the skin and the teeth there and all that good stuff I used about a 45 degree angle I wouldn't go too sharp of an angle because again you could really ruin the, the skull you don't want to break through it uh, so again low PSI on your pressure washer and for instance right now since I have the actual skull here and it's delicate I'm gonna use the uh, the soap uh, top I guess I came with this particular one it's gonna be a very light pressure wash just so I don't destroy the teeth or the skull or any of that good stuff because we're almost done here all right so we're gonna hit them and then we're gonna let them dry overnight and then we'll see you guys for the next and final step let the skull sit out overnight and let it dry. And I ended up knocking out just a couple teeth, not a big deal, but I'm gonna go ahead and use some super glue and pop them right back in. Now that the skull is dry and we got the teeth put back in and they're dry, the final and last step and I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video where I had all the supplies laid out, is you're going to need a bottle of Mop and Glow. And you could just get this at the dollar store, super cheap. And what this does, you're gonna put one coat completely on the skull and it's gonna help protect it from dust. And it's also gonna give it a little nice shiny glow to it and it's gonna keep it nice and white. That's it, my skull mount is officially done. It looks absolutely really beautiful and super cool and the, the mop and glow get, gave it a nice little glaze or nice little shine to it it looks really cool and just there's so many intricate details on this actual skull and it's just super cool to have this in my house now where we can mount it and just is going to remind us of an awesome hunt out in the swamp and even up here like in the head when i was spraying water through it there was actually all these little pores on the top of its head that was squirting water out so it just shows you like how much like that they sense and they can feel up here in their head. And like I said, the bottom jaw is very, is hollow and much more sensitive. And you see how like these two pieces interlock into each other, which is really cool. And the jaw sits on top, the top jaw sits on top of the bottom jaw and it has these like little indentations up here where the big teeth sit in the, the mouth. So it's just super, super cool to see this up close and personal and see again, how much detail is on these actual bones and just like looking at the whole entire thing. It's just the neatest thing in the world. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this video. It was really cool for me to do and I think I did an excellent job for my first time ever. And I can't wait to do it on another mammal. And I think it's really cool preserving a beautiful, preserving a beautiful animal like this and it, it'd always be a memory sitting in our house, uh, like I said, of an excellent hunt. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a thumbs up, thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and until my next one, follow your dream and keep on catching.